shout in triumph to the God of Jacob. Like newborn infants, alleluia, you must long for the pure spiritual milk that in In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today, as we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, we offer this Mass for the repose of the soul of Dean Hermance, and we're also very uh, pleased to celebrate the baptism of Aurelia with her family here present. And so we have very important questions for the parents and godparents as we begin the Mass today. Dear parents and godparents, your family has experienced great joy in the birth of your daughter, and the church shares your happiness. Today, this joy has brought you to the church to give thanks to God for the gift of your child and celebrate a new birth in the waters of baptism. We rejoice with you, for today, the number of those baptized in Christ will be increased, and we offer you our support in raising your child in the practice of the faith. And so, therefore, I ask you, what name have you given to your child? And what do you ask of God's church for Aurelia Maria? In asking for baptism for your daughter, you're undertaking the responsibility of raising her in the faith so that keeping God's commandments, she may love the Lord and her neighbor as Christ taught us. Do you understand this responsibility? And God, parents, are you ready to help the parents of this child in their duty? Aurelia Maria, the church of God receives you with great joy. In her name, I sign you with the sign of the cross of Christ our Savior. Then after me, your parents and godparents will do the same. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Et in terra pax
us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. of Israel say his mercy endures forever let the house of Aaron say his mercy endures forever let those who fear the Lord say his mercy endures forever give thanks to the Lord for he is good his love is a was hard pressed and was falling but the Lord helped me my strength and my courage is the Lord and he has been my savior the joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just give thanks to the Lord for he is good his love is everlasting the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone by the Lord had this been done it is wonderful in our eyes this is the day the Lord has made let us be glad and rejoice in it Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus 
is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is the truth. The Word of the Lord. you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. 
Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and if you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is perhaps one of my favorite uh, Sundays because uh, these readings are really foundational for an understanding of what we're doing here at St. Alice and really the life of the Christian disciple. Uh, today we see the purpose of baptism. We have an image of the church, and it's a really beautiful image, right, in the first reading. They all the same heart and mind, no division between them. They all have everything in common. There's no fighting. Everyone has t their needs taken care of by everyone else, and there's great power that's manifested through that witness. Sounds really great, huh? But we don't see that very often, do we? Why is that? Well, because of human brokenness. This can't happen just by human power. There has to be divine power that makes that possible. To share the same mind and heart, it's not enough that we just think the same thoughts. We need to have the same power living within us. That's what the purpose of baptism is, is that we become one with Christ, and therefore it is his power, his life, that allows us to be one. His ideas, his mind, his life. And that's what Aurelia is going to be receiving today. And that's what all of us who are Christian have received in our baptism. And that's when we renew our baptismal promises. We're always saying, the only reason we're able to do this is because of God. Jesus Christ is the only reason we can do this. Because if we are relying upon a particular leader or a particular priest, it's going to fall apart. We have to rely upon Jesus Christ. Amen? Because he's the only one who's God. I'm not God. Neither is our bishop. Neither is the Holy Father. We need his grace to be able to do this thing. And so Jesus is the glue that holds us together because we're all pretty different, aren't we? What reason do we have to be together except Jesus Christ? Really important. So what does it look like if we're one in Jesus Christ? Well, the second reading tells us that we need to obey his commandments. That shows we're children of God. It's not enough to say, I believe, I have a relationship with God, but then not do what he says. How would that work in your own family? If the kids don't obey you, are they good kids? <laughs> No, of course not. If a kid is going to disobey all the rules of the house, they're going to invite all kinds of shady people over, they're going to trash the house, they're going to do drugs, they're going to do all kinds of horrible things, they're not listening to you, what are you going to say to that kid? you got a choice to make, kid. You can either shape up or get out, right? Because that's the reality. We can't be a part of the household of God and disobey the commandments of our Father. So that's what's really important. When we baptize a child, what we're saying is they're too young to make that choice themselves. We're making it for them. We're choosing to invite God into this house, and we're going to live it with her. And so I'm very grateful you guys have made that choice. And all Christian parents here, it's such a great inspiration that you do that. Because the greatest gift you can give them is the gift of Jesus Christ. It's the gift of his love that's poured out to us. But there's a problem, isn't there? Because it's hard to believe in it. And indeed, Thomas, I think, gives us this beautiful crowning jewel of a gospel which I love so much because it's the reason why we focus so much on healing here in the parish because I think Thomas reflects a lot of us. Thomas has had his hopes shattered. He has seen the one he thought was going to save the world crucified and died and there's no coming back from that. We've never seen anyone come back from that. You know, I know he's heard the story. I know he said he would come back but I just can't believe it. Have you ever been there before? You thought things were going to go a certain way, and then your dreams were shattered. And then people tell you, no, no, it's, it's going to be better. And you're like, yeah, right. You ever felt that way? This is a very human experience. It's very real. And we wonder, well, Thomas gets a bad rap. But you realize Thomas's doubt and then his healing of his doubt has done more for us than the faith of the other disciples. 
we see what happens to Thomas, the process of healing, where he is just focused too much on what he's lost, and he can't even imagine something better until he encounters the risen Jesus. And in fact, he has to put his hand into the glorified wounds of the Lord. And that's what's just so beautiful, friends, is that we recognize, like, <laughs> when your wounds are healed, like, it, it's so remarkable. Jesus says, hey, here, Thomas, put your finger in the nail marks and put your hand into my side. How many of you have heard the difference of that? You know how big your hand is? Like, he put his hand into the side? That's a massive wound. Remember, the Lord was pierced with a spearhead, right? That's a big wound. There's no coming back from that, but there is. There is. Christ Jesus has taken that wound, and although he leaves the hole there, it is no longer a place of shame and death, but it's a place that gives life and light and healing. And that's the truth of the matter. Friends, I've been able to share my story with you about my struggles when I was growing up. So many of you have given your testimony. When people give their testimony, what Jesus has done for them in their life, and you see the other side of it, it's remarkable. It's no longer a place of shame. It's a badge of glory. I can look back and see that's who I was. And I can always go back there if I want to, but I don't have to anymore. And that's what Jesus offers to all of you, is to say, friends, if you want to continue in darkness, you can, but Jesus offers you something better. Will you come with him? Will you do that? And so now we come to divine mercy, the devotion which I think every one of us needs to really take to heart, because this is what we're about as a parish. There's several parts of divine mercy devotion. It started... Well, it started in the 20th century. It was given to Sister Faustina by Jesus. It was a private devotion. But John Paul II, St. John Paul II, in the year 2000, he promoted this devotion to the whole church and wanted this Sunday to be a Sunday where priests promote the mercy of God. The Divine Mercy Devotion is based in five parts. And you can remember it by a simple acronym. It's a name of a bird, a finch. Okay, so a little bird told me about mercy, and that bird was a finch, okay? And these are the things. It's a feast image, novena, chaplet, and hour. People say that with me. Feast, image, novena, chaplet, and hour. Finch, okay? The Feast of Divine Mercy, which we're celebrating today, Sister Faustina said Jesus told her he wanted a Feast of Divine Mercy, and Jesus said, I will pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those who approach the font of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion will obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. He's like, Come to me. I don't care where you've been. If you will come to confession, if you'll come to the fount of mercy and you'll receive me, I will pour out grace. Isn't that remarkable? It's so good. He says, on that day, on the feast of mercy, all the divine floodgates are opened. Let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though his sins be the scarlet. Right? So mankind will not have peace until it turns to the fount of my mercy. Because the only thing that keeps us apart is sin, right? That's where division comes from, is sin. So Jesus is saying, go to confession. If you've been apart for a while, go to confession and receive his mercy. We're going to have opportunity for a little bit of confession today in the afternoon before our divine mercy devotion at three. Really important that we go if you haven't been in a long time. If you go normally, wait and let other people do it, okay? All right. The feast is important. But the second is the image. And I really want to focus on the image because this is what's really great. I want to, it's over here. I want to show you a few things about it. So there's several images of divine mercy. This one is the Polish image. Here, turn me on. Okay, good, great. Okay, so you'll notice about the image, Jesus says this. He says, I promise that the soul that will venerate this image will not perish. And you're like, what? Did you hear that? I promise that the soul that will venerate this image won't perish. And you're like, what is that? How is that possible? Jesus says, it's not in the beauty of the color nor of the brush but in my grace, okay? And when you look at the image, what I've discovered in this image as I've meditated upon it is the purpose of this image. Jesus has given it to us to heal our image of God and of ourselves. It's meant to show us truth so it can form our minds and our consciences and our hearts to receive him. Notice the whole picture is darkness and Jesus is the light. Doesn't he say, I am the light of the world, right? So is anything else light in this picture? No. Jesus is the light. So that's what we have to remember. There's some people in the world who think, I've got it together. I need Jesus to help me a little bit, but I've got my act together. No, you don't. 
The world is in darkness. Turn on the TV. Do you believe me? The world is in darkness. We're trying to figure it out ourselves without God, and that world is hell. It is darkness. And it will never get better by just putting more money into it or putting more effort to it or electing this person or that person. The world will never change until Jesus Christ has been received into it because the world is lost. Does this sound anything familiar to you? Okay. Does this resonate with you? Because it's really resonating with me strongly. We have to accept first that the world is broken and in darkness. And if we are living under the illusion that with just a little bit more smarts and ingenuity and money we can fix it, we are dumb. And just as lost as everyone else. But Jesus has come to save us. He has come to bring light into the darkness and we need to receive it. The light has shone in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And what is the purpose of Jesus' coming? Has he come to kill us? No, look at what he's come to do. Many people have the idea that God is just in competition with me. You know those stuffy rules that we have to follow, those commandments? Ick, who wants those, right? You know, they're just about keeping your fun away, aren't they? No, right? Because the commandments are not burdensome, we hear. The commandments are to give you life so that you're not a slave to your passions. How many people think, yeah, I can, I can do whatever I want. I'm free. I drink all the time and I do all these things and I party all the time. Is that happiness? Well, it is for a moment. Otherwise, people wouldn't do it. But the fact is, is that they have to keep doing it because once they stop, they realize their life is being wasted. That's why people live from one high to the next, one relationship to the next. Maybe you lived that way. Maybe some of you still live that way. I'm telling you, Jesus is calling out to you in the midst of your darkness saying, come to the light. You don't have to live that way anymore. There is a better way. And you might be saying, it's impossible. I'm too far gone. There's no way. He says, I am the light. You are not. If you'll receive the light of Jesus Christ, just as Thomas does, it is possible that your wounds can be healed. What does he come to do? He's come to bless you. That's his right hand extended in blessing. He comes with a blessing. Who doesn't want a blessing? Right? That's right. We all want a blessing, right? So with his right hand, with power, he comes to bless. And then his left hand is revealing the wound in his heart. You know that wound that Thomas put his hand in? He's pulling open the curtain to his heart. And from his heart flow two rays of blood and water. The water which washes us clean from sin and the blood which is the life of souls. You don't have life in yourself. I don't have life in myself. Our life comes from Jesus. I can't clean myself up. I need Jesus to wash me. That's what we're doing in baptism. We're washing clean and infusing divine God power and life into this baby. And was given to all of those who receive their sacraments at Easter. So it's being poured out from his heart. Not judgment, not condemnation, but mercy. And notice... It's a little hard to see, but he's taking a step out toward you. So he's walking forward. It's not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go bear fruit that will last. So we see very clearly it wasn't you who ended up in these pews because you somehow figured it out because you're so smart or I'm so smart and I figured out this Jesus thing. No, the only reason you are here is because God wants you here and he first made the initiative. That's what gives us hope is before you did anything for God, he wanted you here. We have to realize who we are, that I didn't somehow have something that God needed. I don't. I was made by God out of a pure gift of love only because of God's pleasure and he wants me here, not because of anything I can do for him. But because he's God, and God is love, God is, is God hatred? Is God condemnation? No. Where does hatred and condemnation come from? It comes from when we reject him. When you reject God, when you reject love, all that is left is condemnation for you. But it is not God who condemns you. You will condemn yourself. God wishes to save everyone. God does not desire the death of the sinner, but that the sinner would turn around and be saved. But we're so dumb. We say, oh, you know what? Just one more movie, one more drink, one more hour on Facebook, one more whatever. These things cannot give us one hour of life. They can't give one bit of light in our darkness. There is one light, one truth, one way, one hope. Jesus Christ! 
sorry if I get a little worked up about this. <laughs> I just feel like I say it, and you're like, yeah, Father, amen, but yet we don't change. Why? Because it's one thing to believe it, it's another thing to make the sacrifices necessary to live in the light. Because a lot of people, they like come to the light, they get a little bit, and then they're like, oh, I can go back into the darkness and I'll hang out over here until it gets too dark, and then I'll come back to the light. No, your light is now the light. You cannot live in darkness any longer. Don't. And that's why the last piece of this image is so important. It's the words on the bottom. That's our response. Jesus is offering all of this to us, but we have to embrace it. And that's our response. Jesus, I trust in you. What I see here is the gospel. And I'm not going to stay over here and be like, yeah, that's for somebody else. No, Jesus, I accept this. I trust in you. And I'm going to trust in you and not in myself. I'm going to live in you so that you can be my life and you can bring me to hope and healing. It is Jesus who brings healing. It is Jesus who brings life. There is no other Lord, no other Savior, no other God, no other comfort in this world that is lasting. They are momentary comforts. But he brings peace. That's why he stands. The first gift he gives them, he walks through the door, and that's terrifying, right? The door is locked, and somebody comes through the door, you're like, ah! <laughs> That's what would be my reaction anyway. <laughs> so what is the first thing he says? Peace be with you. Oh, good. <laughs> but it's not peace that the world gives. It's his peace. And peace is not the absence of conflict. Hear that again. Peace is not the absence of conflict. Because Jesus says, in the world you will have trouble, but fear not. I have overcome the world. Have you overcome the world? Have you overcome death? Do you have power over your own life and death? Who does? Why are we trusting in ourselves instead of him? You see, this image, friends, that's why Jesus says those who venerate this image will not perish. Because venerating isn't just looking at it and be like, that's a pretty picture. No, it's taking this to heart and saying these words with meaning receiving the message of the image, which is nothing less than the gospel. And that makes sense. Do you know why we're doing what we're doing here at St. Alice? Why we're focusing on healing? Because friends, so many people do not believe this is possible, but I tell you it is. And the only way that people, some people are just living in their brokenness, and that's why we have healing nights, that's why we focus on inner healing prayer teams, that's why I want a lot more people involved in the healing professions. Because so many people have been hurt by their life experiences, and they don't believe God is good. And so we need to promote the image, the right image of God, and the right image of the church, so that people know that this is where you can meet Jesus, and this is where you will find a home, and this is where you will find life. Not because Father has it, not because any of you have it, but because Jesus does. And he's right here, friends. Like, I don't know how, I mean, I yell a lot, okay, fine. But I jump around a bit, right? I get a really big monstrance to make a point. <laughs> like, this is not like, this is all of a piece, friends. This is not like odd or weird. This is because I'm trying to put a big exclamation point on the fact that Father Mark can't help you. I can't. I never could. It's never been about any particular priest. It has always been about Jesus Christ, and if we forget that, we're cooked. So friends, come to him today, not just today, but every day, begging his mercy for you, for your family, for the world, and don't live in darkness anymore. We're done with the darkness, amen? No more Jesus is already so deeply offended. Look at his heart that is so pierced with love for you, who poured himself out for you, and the world remains cold and indifferent to his love. I have no control over them, but brothers and sisters, can each one of us make that commitment today to love him a little bit more, to console him for those souls who are lost? He loves children so much. And like to see the soul of Aurelia today, just this beautiful little child, who will learn to love him by your example, will learn to love him, this great gift that she isn't asking for, 
doesn't even know what it is right now. But that's the truth of all of us. None of us know what is offered to us. If we did, we would die of joy. So as we look in her and see her receive this gift, let's be reminded of the gift that was given to each one of us. And let's dedicate ourselves to living out of that place of union with Jesus, who is mercy itself. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. stand and offer our petitions. Let us invoke the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for this child about to receive the grace of baptism for his parent, for her parents, godparents, and all the baptized. Give this child new birth and baptism through the radiant divine mystery of your death and resurrection and join her to your holy church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Make her a faithful disciple and witness to your gospel through baptism and confirmation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lead her through holiness of life to the joys of the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Make her parents and godparents a shining example of faith to her, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her family always in your love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Renew the grace of baptism in each one of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the needs of our world that is so lost and broken that the mercy of God would pour forth and bring healing and light and life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the sick and those who've asked for our prayers for their healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the faithful departed that they would be pardoned of their sins and welcomed home to the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now we ask for the intercession of our brothers and sisters, the saints. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us. us. Saint Michael, Pray for us. Holy angels of God. Pray for us. Saint John the Baptist. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul. Pray for us. Saint Andrew. Pray for us. Saint John. Pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for us. Saint Stephen. Pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch. Pray for us. Saint Lawrence. Pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity. Pray for us. Saint Agnes. Pray for us. Saint Gregory. Pray for us. Saint Augustine. Pray for us. Saint Athanasius. Pray for us. Saint Basil. Pray for us. Saint Martin. Pray for us. Saint Benedict. Pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic. Pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier. Pray for us. Saint John Vianney. Pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena. Pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus. Pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God. Pray, pray for us. Almighty ever living God, who sent your Son into the world to drive out from us the power of Satan, the spirit of evil, and bring the human race rescued from darkness into the marvelous kingdom of your light. We humbly beseech you to free this child from original sin, to make her the temple of your glory, and to grant that your Holy Spirit may dwell in her, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we'll do the first anointing over the sternum. May the strength of Christ the Savior protect you. As a sign of this, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name in the same Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, that the Lord God Almighty may bestow new life on this child by water and the Holy Spirit. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear parents and godparents, through the sacrament of baptism, the child you presented is about to receive from the love of God new life by water and the Holy Spirit. For your part, you must strive to bring her up in the faith so that this divine life shall be given to her, be preserved from the contagion of sin and may grow in her day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, mindful of your own baptism, renounce sin and professed faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church in which children are baptized. I invite all of us to make our renunciations together with them. Our response is, I do. Do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We're proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so I ask you, is it your will, therefore, that Aurelia should receive baptism in the faith of the church which we profess with you. Please approach the font and you can bring your things with you. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. It's a baptismal garment. Okay. It's okay. It's good. Aurelia Maria, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Blessed be God who chose you in Christ. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's freed you from sin, given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and joined you to his people, he now anoints you with the chrism of salvation, so that you may remain as a member of Christ, priest, prophet, and king, unto eternal life. <laughs> Smells good, yeah? Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> Aurelia Maria, you have become a new creation and clothe yourself in Christ. May this white garment be to you a sign of your Christian dignity with your family and friends to help you by word and example. Bring it unstained into eternal life. Amen.
receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly so that your child, enlightened by Christ, may walk always as a child of the light and persevering in the faith may run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly court. May the Lord Jesus, who made the deaf to hear and the mute to speak, grant that you may soon receive his word with your ears and profess the faith with your lips to the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's give a warm welcome to the newest member of our family. Yay. Please be seated.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the love of Holy Church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, Peter, his assistant Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise that they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service which we make to you also for those to whom you've been pleased to give the new birth of water in the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be he pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium fidei, mortem tuam annunciamus Domine, et tuam resurrectionem confitemur, non hec venias. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as ones who are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Preceptis salutaribus moniti et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere, pater noster, qui has in celis, Sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis orie, et dimite nobis de vita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, Et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Libra nos quesumus domine ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut opi misericordiae tui et iuti et peccato simus semper liberi, et ab omni perturbatione securi, expectantes beatem spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Jesu Christi. Qui hatum es regnum et potestas, Et gloria in secula. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. To receive Holy Communion is important that we are practicing Catholic in a state of grace. So for those who are practicing Catholic and who are in a state of grace, you may come forward for communion to fill the entire line, either kneeling or standing. If you kneel, please place your hands underneath the cloth so that you can receive on the tongue in the appropriate posture. Um, for those who have walkers or wheelchairs, you can remain where you are. You can come into the center spaces or to the side spaces where there's more room for you to receive communion. For those who are not Catholic, if you uh, or those who are not disposed, you can remain in your pews and pray with us. Or if you come forward with your family, indicate that you're not receiving communion by placing your arms over your chest. Thank you for your respect for the blessed sacrament.
mercy endures forever. Bring your hand and feel the place of the nails. by these versions, shape and nothing more. See, Lord, at thy service, law lies here a heart, lost, all lost in wonder at the God thou art. Seeing, touching, tasting, are in thee deceived. Houses trusty hearing that shall be believed. What God's Son has told me, take for truth I do. Truth himself speaks truly, for there's nothing true. On the cross thy God had made no sign to men. Here thy very manhood steals from human ken. Both are my confession, both are my belief, and I pray the prayer of the dying thief. I am not like Thomas, wounds I cannot see, but I plainly call thee Lord and God as he. This faith each day Oh, thou art reminded 
crucified, living bread the life of us for whom he died. Lend this life to me then, feed and feast my mind. May be thou the sweetness man was meant to find. Like what tender tales tell of the pelican. Bead me, Jesus, Lord, in what thy bosom ran. Blood that but one drop of has the power to win. All the world forgiveness of its world of sin. Jesus, whom I look at, shrouded here below, I beseech thee, send me what I thirst for so. Someday to gaze on thee face to face in light and be blessed forever with thy glory sight. Monumento venit 
Stantibus, in medius tetit Christus, dicens ox vobis omnibus, Alleluia. Didimus, qui osurexerat Jesus, remonsit fere dubius. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Deus meus, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Beati qui non vide rund, et firmite credide rund, vita me. Sit lauset jubilatio, benedicamus domino. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a couple announcements. First, uh, our school year is winding down, and our St. Joseph Homeschool Academy is completing its third year. And we have experienced moms helping our homeschooling families like to call up uh, is Sylvia Cavillo here? I don't see her. She's. Oh, Vanessa is doing it. Okay. Okay, so who's doing it today? Vanessa. Okay, very good. So Vanessa is going to come up and talk. I had a different announcement. Okay, very good. Okay. Vanessa is going to kind of talk about the program and the impact it's made on her family. Please come forward. Hello, my name is Vanessa. I'm a homeschool mother of three. Here to talk about my experience with St. Joseph Homeschool Academy. I started homeschooling during the pandemic when the school district was unable to meet the needs of my son who has autism and my daughter who has a language processing disorder. This greatly affects their speech ab and ability to read. These conditions resulted in anxiety at school and adverse negative behavior at home. It was at this time my husband and I realized our ignorance and failures when it came to their education as we were so separated from it. Homeschooling in the beginning was def very difficult for me. I suddenly found myself as a teacher, speech therapist, behavior therapist, occupational uh, therapist, and a special education teacher. I was able to find special education services for my children online, but my family began to feel isolated. The kids all had friends but lacked role models and vir virtuous peers, as did I. I began praying a lot, and after many years of disbelief, 
uh, I decided to come back to church. I was raised Protestant and my husband is a cradle Catholic. We tried many churches, though no, with no luck, and after about a year we decided to come to St. Alice as our last attempt and finally found our home. This parish and St. Joseph's Home School Academy have been an answer to our prayers. I can't even begin to tell you of the growth I have seen in my family over the past year. We have very little to no negative behaviors. My once shy children that were afraid to open up to anyone are now bold and confident. They sing in the choir. My sons are altar servers and the younger two love to lead the rosary every Wednesday before school. They love Jesus, took their first communion, sit patiently through adoration, and we adore all of our new friends. They are all also doing better academically. They want to work hard. Their reading is constantly improving. They love to read Bible history and read about the saints. My own anxiety has gone down for the first time in my life, thanks from the support of the other mothers, um, RCIA, all of the services offered, and also Christ's mercy. I get to help teach class, learn Spanish with my sponsor Beatrice, and I have also noticed a sharp increase in my ability to focus and teach daily. My husband gets to participate actively in our children's education and upbringing, and our marriage is better than ever. I would also like to state to anyone considering homeschooling that you do not need a special degree and you do not need to be a special education teacher to do so. You just have to understand you, that you are your child's best advocate and you know them best. You also have to be unrelenting in your prayer and be unrelenting in following the will of Christ. He has placed all the resources such as St. Joseph's here for you and you just have to be willing to listen. St. Alice and St. Joseph's have been such a miracle in our family. I would like to extend a thank you to all who support the program, Lisa, Michelle, and Dora for their leadership and all of the friends we have made and especially Father Mark for making this possible. Of course, this is a very short synopsis of incredible and unspeakable graces that God has poured into our lives, but I only had two minutes. Thank you and God bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. It has been very great uh, to welcome Vanessa and her family here, and uh, I'm so grateful to the leadership of St. Joseph Homeschool. They'll be available after Mass for any questions uh, that you'd like to ask about this next year, as well as, as anything that they've been doing thus far. Also, after Mass, we will be selling tickets for our St. Alice Dedication Day Dinner and Auction, which is coming up in May. So that will be available as well. This auction goes to support things like St. Joseph Homeschool, as well as our future vision for the parish campus. So thank you for support of the auction. If you'd like to donate items for the silent auction or other things, they'll be available to talk with you about what the needs are after Mass as well. There's pozole also after Mass. As Chef Martin and crew have been cooking all morning. It's delicious. Please join us for food after Mass. Uh, donations gratefully accepted. Um, also, if you are wanting to go to Catholic school, uh, in either O'Hare or St. Paul, we have a deadline for submitting subsidy requests. That deadline is April 15th. So if you have not turned yours in yet, you need to get it in because we have a lot of kids going to Catholic school this year. We need to make sure we budget appropriately. So thank you for submitting those on time to our office by the end of day, April 15th. Also, our youth group will be meeting today at 2 uh, for one hour only to give people time uh, to either come to Holy Hour here for Divine Mercy or to go uh, to... Uh, John Carlo up in Beaverton, who's a well-known Catholic singer in Spanish. That'll be this evening at 6 p.m. Okay. Uh, we have our Night of Hope and Healing this Thursday. Invite your friends. Starts at 6 on Thursday. God's grace is really a present to us. We have our family, young adult, uh, sorry, our young family ministry group that's going to be meeting this Saturday at 10 a.m. in the Paris Center for an Easter brunch. There's details in the flock note. There's the share for the Catholic Radio. I'll be a guest on Friday. Show some St. Alice love at the 10 o'clock hour. Okay, very good. Um, and then uh, lastly, well, not second to lastly, there's too many announcements. Get a bulletin. Okay, sorry. All right. <laughs> Three o'clock today, we'll have a sung divine mercy here. After the Spanish Mass and after I get to eat, I'll be in here with confessions for a little while. Um, and then we'll have divine mercy at 3 p.m. here in the church with our blessed Lord. And this next Saturday in the evening, we are relaunching the 72. So some of you were a part of the 72 last year. What's the 72? It's people who love St. Alice, people who are very committed. They're invested financially. They're invested by coming to holy hours. They're invested by serving in the parish. If that's you, if you want to know what's next, if you want to know how can I help, how can I get involved, how can I serve, you've been listening to the homilies, you've been praying, you've been sacrificing, you've been doing a lot, 
but you want to know how can I get back? We're going to be launching a, a, a potluck and, a, a, and really going to share the next steps of the vision uh, this next Saturday evening. We put information and invite in the flock note for the potluck as well as uh, some things in the mail. And so thank you. Whew, that's a lot. Uh, uh, yes, we have a blessing for mom and dad. Okay, I can't forget them. Okay, very good. Yes. Adan and Itzi, uh, just congratulations to you guys. What a beautiful, beautiful gift you're giving to your daughter and praying for you. I uh, married them a couple years ago, so it's really beautiful to see the fruit of their love here. And we're just so happy. We're so happy for you guys, and we're here for you. And we're going to ask the church to bring a special blessing to you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. The Lord God Almighty, through his Son, born of the Virgin Mary, brings joy to Christian mothers as the hope of eternal life shines forth upon their children. May he graciously bless the mother of this child, so that as she now gives thanks for the gift of her child, she may remain always united with her in thanksgiving in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord God Almighty, the giver of life, both in heaven and on earth, bless the father of this child, so that together with his wife, they may by word and example prove to be the first witnesses of the faith to their child in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord God Almighty, who by water and the Holy Spirit has given us new birth unto eternal life, abundantly bless his faithful here present, that always and everywhere they may be active members of his people, and may he bestow his peace on all who are here in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Regina Celi, letare, alleluia. Qui aque mero isti portare, alleluia. Resurrexit, sicut dixit, alleluia. 